The Harding Mills Case, written by Opie Rogers. A few years before his death, he wrote some history about the courts and cases he had been involved in. He remembered one before his day, which was evidently talked about and relived many times between himself and his friends. I would like to share this with you, as written by him in his own words. The Harding Mills Case, written by Opie Rogers. This arose from my day. Still, I can remember events talked about the most of the matter. There was a man named Patterson who lived upon a high hill in a little, little river, Red River Bottom. It was called Shake Rag. This fellow Patterson was a Fredno pensioner and had not been since the Civil War. He was very saving, and it was rumored that he had plenty of money. Two men named Mills and Harding went to his place one night and attempted to rob him. He had a family and I believe one son and two daughters. He and his wife and, and the five gave them a battle. One woman came forward with a butcher knife and they were forced to resort to their guns. Several shots were fired and the fire broke up when they killed Patterson. Murder was rare at this time and a large segment of the solid citizenship got up in arms and sided with the law. The county has a very good sheriff, and of course, he and his deputies made up the enforcement block of the citizenship. Bill Maddox was a natural born investigator and was certainly all okay. He left town early and later came back in and told his deputy, J.W. Hatchett, he was a good investigator and a good enforcement officer, and he would locate the offender. There was a small shift of snow on the ground, and an invisible Maddox came, could find the horse tracks that he was after. He tracked the horse up to a near Scotland and found the horse he had ridden into the lot on one of the Hall boys. Hall asked him what he was doing out in his barn lot, and Maddox answered that he was tracking the horse of the man that rode that killed Patterson the night before. Hall was angry but kept his peace as he talked to the sheriff. Maddox followed and tracked on up to the home of a man named Mills, but Mills was a very dangerous man and Maddox knew it that he was, had to be very careful. Luckily, Mills was away. Maddox went into the uh, attached of the home and found the shoes of the horses was wearing as he was riding up there. The horse was shot until they reached the home and Mills had then evidently taken the shoes off of the horse. Maddox knew that one attempt to arrest Mills on the murder charge would result in bloodshed. He asked Hatchet if he could take Sam Lay along and make the arrest. Hatchet, a young man and full of enthusiasm and eager to engage in the venture. Maddox hesitated and finally agreed, but after Hatchet had left, he took off with his deputies and desperately afraid one of them might get killed. Hatchet related the details to the rider several times. He and Lay started down the road east. There was an old field and a cattle running therein. He rode up along and among the cattle and down close to Mills and asked if he could buy cattle, and at that instant Hatchet saw he was not drawn. Hatchet threw his gun on him and ordered him to attack, ordered him to stick his, up his hands. Mills hesitated, but finally put his hands up and Hatchet told Lay to hold his gun on him as he made an effort to get the gun out of his pocket to kill him. Lay certainly did a good job and held him covered while Hatchet put the handcuffs on him and they brought him into Clinton. Clinton Druggis, the father of the deputy sheriff, kept telling the officers that a man named Harding was in on the matter. Harding was the deputy up at Scotland and under Maddox. Maddox told Harling to come into the sheriff's office and he undressed him and made a thorough search. The Pattersons was fired several shots and one bullet had a, a day book and stuck and barely in his Harding's breast. From this, they secured enough to find that Harding was really in on the center of the affair. Under the direct questioning of the sheriff and his forced harding, was put on trial and jail. Put on trial and tried. The result was a conviction. He took an appeal to the Supreme Court. The court reversed the case on the new trial. 
In the meantime, Mills was tried and convicted and sentenced to death. As I now recall, Mills changed the venue to Cleburne County where his conviction was had and he was executed at Heber Springs. There was a rectal physician living here in Clinton and practiced here, but he was mixed up in a lot of local gossip and doings. His name was Steele. He was taken to an active part against the sheriff, and in fact, he just did not like the sheriff. Harding was confined to the first old log jail and awaited his trial on reversal. The sheriff kept a colored man guarding the jail. One night, some parties supposed to be headed or directed by Dr. Steele went down and had the darky open the jail and come out and shot Harding. That ended the case as attached a great deal of attention. Did he type that up, Ricky? Yeah. Now, I remember when I was a little boy, I'd go over at his office. And Uncle Opie, he was my great uncle, he typed for two fingers. Of course, you know, being the guy I am, I'd aggravate him a little bit. And I said, Uncle, can't you type them other fingers? Well, let me tell you, he could type for two fingers faster than I could type with all fingers. And I took <laughs> typing in high school. He, uh... I'm sorry that I lost all that he wrote about what he did because he did a lot of murder trials. Oh, wow. And he did everything, murder trials, divorces, deeds, wills, Flash. and everything.